Hello, one and all, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Oh, let me wipe that off your screen there for you. <laughs> Today, getting a look at a eight versus eight game that I just had to show you guys. I'm uh, a little bit of showboating here. Can't cannot lie. Had a really phenomenal game. Things looked really dire in the end, but we actually ended up pulling one out of the hat here, and I wanted to show it off. I think everyone ought to fear the tick by the end of this play, <laughs> by the end of this uh, this game, anyways. But let's introduce our players here. Spawning on the western side. Our red player for the red team here. Tear Shadow. Very cool name. Going for that bot lab start off of three mexes. Very nice. Very classic build order here. Going for the two solar collectors. Very nice. Going to be... Going to have uh, plenty of power here in order to get started in the early game. Might might slip a little in the, uh, the factory queue here. Uh, I guess we're at 65. He's produced more power than I thought. Yeah, well, okay, anyway. Uh, spawning on the eastern side here for the blue team. Your one and only, yours truly, TNT. Yeah, I guess I got to lead the blue team this game. It's always fun. A lot of pressure on your shoulders, right? When you uh, when you, when you get the blue or the red color, you know that you're the top of the true score list. Uh, so I knew that I had to had to perform for this team here. So a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot was going through my mind here. JTB Hats already committed to teching up for me earlier in the match that was uh, discussed in chat here, so that was quite nice of them to commit to doing that so I could just worry about frontlining here. I get a tech out, but I think I lost it to XSpec A, who I think got the tick out first, so congratulations XSpec A. Today you are our winner of the Get a Unit Out on the Field award. Very nicely done. We see vehicles down here, down south. We see bots most of the rest of the way up. An air lab start back here for CYXD26. Interesting that he didn't start back here. We had a player that started back in this caldera and then moved over to this position. I think I like this position better though for CYXD26. Yeah, I have no idea how to say that. I'm not sure if that's even human legible. That might be droid speak. Uh, yeah, I think I like this position a lot better. You get those three mexes and then you can always go back and, and take those, um, which is always a nice play. Getting a little bit of scouting information here. This is the importance of those ticks, right? You find the enemy bases, you get to know, get to learn where everyone's at, find where all the different players are. So right now you can see the blue team visual data here. Metal extractors back here. Sounds like something broke through on this line. Might have misheard though. Either way, we're harassing down a construction worker here. We're harassing down these metal extractors, trying to make sure that Derragon has a rough start here early into the match. Construction bot does go down, which is quite nice. Those are definitely a pain to replace. And all of the metal extractors here for Derragon end up going down. This tick gets a good scout here. These two a little bit unmicroed. I'm actually super, super slacking on the micro here. You can see I'm not producing anything. I'm wasting energy. Yeah, this is really bad. <laughs> I also had accidentally queued my construction bot and my res bot that I meant to keep in my base. Uh, yeah, I'd accidentally rallied those across the map, so this was definitely a very rough start here. I was I was dedicating so much APM to these techs. This is definitely an example of, of when it becomes too much APM dedicated to your uh, your early game micro that it causes a detriment to you. You can see I finally click on the bot lab again and start queuing up units, but it's it's way way too late here. Now up north, doing a good job is Mark's concubine, making sure to keep the pressure up here positioning a grunt along this axis just to make sure that no enemy units are going to push forward. That's very nice. Tear Shadow pushed up extremely far, extremely quickly. Very, very nicely done. Getting a, a security on this front line here in the form of a light laser turret. Building these twin guards with a construction bot that's also very, very nice. Yeah, very nicely done. Spec A is beating me to the punch. Very phenomenally done. I was worrying too much about that micro in the early game and that cost me a lot of my early game movement here so i was actually well well behind where i probably should have been just goes to show you right like if you're if you're if it costs you your entire early game to micro those units maybe it's not worth it or at the very least maybe you need to practice i certainly do i was a bit rusty there first contact here running into spec a x spec a find a few of his pawns here realize i'm gonna need a bigger army now down here we have coziest magician playing it with the Cortex. We've already got some thugs out on the field. Always awesome to see these thugs out. They are a great option. Really, really self-sufficient unit. They are fast enough to 
sort of keep up with the grunts or the pawns. They do enough damage to definitely shut down pawns and grunts and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's quite nice. I think this is a bit overkill on the light laser turrets. But I guess I don't hate it. I would rather see more light laser turrets than less light laser turrets, I think. Unless it was more units available. That, that would also be quite nice. At this point... Kylie's has firmly secured this central area here. Let's take a look at the metal spots. Looks like, yeah, 2.0. Some this like this one's 2.1. I'm not sure why. Very very small difference there. Barely any point to capturing that as opposed to anything else. Uh, but yeah, the the metal spots look to be roughly all the same. At this point, a little bit of aggression has gone down here. A few dead pawns here and there. We've got some light laser turrets up though in order to keep this place safe. Trying to build these medium laser turrets. I'm getting in the habit of building these. I, I think it's probably a, a, a worthwhile investment. I've been turned on to their effectiveness here. You can see 85 versus 190. I think that's, yeah, 18 would, or 80 would be 16, so that'd be 70. So it's slightly more than double the cost. Barely, barely more than double uh, the cost of a light laser turret. But quite a bit more effective. They can outrange those, those uh, arbiters. Or not the arbiters, the, uh, sorry, the rocketeers, aggravators. Which is quite nice. It does prevent their aggression, or at least it, it makes them consider that much more, much more thoroughly. <laughs> at this point, I'm a little concerned because Jit is still down here. Uh, it hasn't quite pushed up as far as I would have liked, so I'm kind of uncomfortable with this segment of the map right here being exposed. But for the most part, the rest of the map has filled out quite nicely. Mark's concubine has done a phenomenal job claiming all the metal extractors up here posturing a nice big army so that it doesn't look like that's a weak point at all. We do see an agitator coming up here slowly but surely for Bar. Oh, wow, that's a that's a rough name. <laughs> we'll just call him Bar. <laughs> yeah, oh well. Uh, we see the T2 lab coming out here for JTB hats. How? Wow. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Uh, JTB hats somehow pinning the commander underneath a energy converter. Uh, I'd love to see this lab reclaimed. I think that's definitely, definitely some room for Room for extracting some metal and putting it into your lab there. Also, sacrificing the commander would be really nice. This is so prone to exploding. I would really love to see these split up or, or just divide it a little bit more. One bomber could make this entire thing light up like a Christmas tree. Ooh, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. I'm already stepping into advanced uh, energy, advanced solar. The uh, the late, late T1 energy production. Don't manage to kill that construction bot there that is unfortunate and these pawn all run to their death. I tried to self-destruct them there. I'd forgotten about that. Figured I might as well try and deny the Rex, but I did not know that those took five whole seconds in order to self-destruct, so uh, quite unfortunate there. x -Spec A now with a pretty commanding lead over this central area, although the metal extractor here isn't claimed, so it's mostly just this part of the map. At this point, I switch to pawn and tick production with Lazarus's here and there in order to reclaim wherever possible. And this army is looking downright devastating down here. So many of these thugs. Yeah, they can really pack a punch. They're an indirect fire unit too, so you don't need to micro them super well. They, they can just be clumped up and they'll do just fine. Actually getting some really big hits on this commander. Legacy now down to 40% health. Very, very low. Has to retreat the commander now at risk of exploding catastrophically. This metal extractor is denied though, and that's the most important thing. Denying metal from your lane your lane opponent is definitely the, the most important part of playing the early game here. That and then reclaiming. If you can get those two things done, then you're going to be in a really good spot. See the thugs marching forward. Laying down devastating fire here. Those Wolverines actually getting a few hits in. It's quite impressive, considering those are artillery vehicles. They are, uh, they are not direct fire by the, any stretch of the words. They lob. They're lobbers. <laughs> they throw their shots way up into the air and just hope that something connects. Definitely not an artful unit, but, uh, well, maybe. I guess depending on your, your uh, definition there. At this point, more and more of my units are coming out, which is good because I need to contest mid. Tear Shadow here with the nice little positioned, nice, nicely positioned ar agitator here. Argitator thinking of the the arbiter from halo Kali's though with the forward vehicle lab and that's actually quite nice going to allow some forward production but also make sure that there's enough units up here on the front lines to deal with bots vehicles actually end up being really good on some spots in this map because of the flatter terrain you can see like down here 
or around in this area any place over here probably pretty good for vehicles as well and especially down here definitely a good decision to go for vehicles cozy's position moving the commander forward here a little bit risky gotta say looks like there was a little bit of a run by too some of these grunts moving forward here you do find some windmills most part, it looks like these will be mopped up, although the metal extractors do go down. That's quite annoying. To get a construction bot back there or something else, try and try and deal with that. It's very annoying to have to deal with. Luckily, though, there's a construction bot here, so we could definitely start that up sometime soon or send the commander back. That's always an option as well. At this point, I'm posturing. I think I was thinking of teching up here. What was my what was my play here? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. We do see T2 coming out now from. Uh, this player's name, JTB Hats. We'll just call you Hats. Hats already started up the T2 production here, but I think I didn't even end up buying one off of them. In the back line here, we do see a whole lot of fighters being brought out, and we do see bomber production as well. I'd love to see this commander sacrifice so we can get a little extra metal. Ooh, and I'd love to see these turned into advanced solar panels. Yeah, that hurts. What is the rule, folks? Let's talk about let's talk about a rule. Let's make it a standard here so that everyone can be on the same page. Let's say no more than four T1 solar collectors. That allots you 600 metal. That's still even more than I would be comfortable sacrificing, considering how much an advanced solar panel costs. It's 370. So let's say 370. That'd be that'd be like just over two solar panels. So let's go with only three T1 solar panels, and then you have to build the advanced solar panels. All right? Can we all agree on that? Brightworks community members, let's work together. Make this a, a beautiful place for everyone. <laughs> Big aggression down here that was ultimately mostly a failure. I was trying to resurrect a whole bunch of this army right here, but Greedzy actually managed to get the commander into position, had enough thugs to push back my pawns, and so I actually ended up winning the majority of this trade, which was really, really bad for me. Trying to secure the advantage by just pushing forward and continuing to bring, uh, or continuing to put metal extractors down, rather just so I have some sort of security here. But ultimately, it is not worth very much. Kelly's getting overrun by a whole bunch of grunts here. Love to see a D-gun right on that channel. Yes, very nice. But yeah, these, these pawns and these, uh, or rather these grunts and thugs and aggravators are all enough to take this down very quickly here. I think I was suffering from an APM shortage here. <laughs> a lot of my, a lot of my uh, actions were poorly done to say the least here you can see these these units are poorly microed my commander is walking forward for some reason i can't remember why this happened I, I i cannot remember the reason why i moved my commander forward here luckily i had enough energy to degun most of this down but yeah this was uh this was a risky play here look at that silver star pawn right there commander does survive which is very nice Pawn's taking a lot of fire over here. Trying to get these to uh, avoid that fire. Move them around as much as possible. Set them on repeat. Tell them to move around. Always one strategy. Works pretty good. You can see the beamer turrets, how, the, how effective they are. They actually can blast down these aggravators before they can get into range. Same with the rocket rocketeers. The uh, Armada rocket bots. Looks like they're shooting down my construction bot. That's no good. Construction bot does light up like a Christmas tree. Explodes like it's made out of TNT and dynamite. But yeah, these aggravators, they, they actually have a surprisingly difficult time pushing into these uh, pushing into these beamers here. So I'm definitely starting to use them more. I think that's uh, I think it's definitely one way to increase my early game survivability. Go for those go for those aggravators. Or you'd rather go for those beamers. Keeps those aggravators off my off my back. Right now I'm teching up, so that's why I basically don't have any units out. I should probably be eating up this lab at this point. It's probably what I'll switch into eventually here. T2 lab finishes up though. So for now we're just going to produce a whole bunch of ticks. Some thugs have made it past the front lines here and are ravaging the back lines, being a nuisance. They're not very healthy, and they're not very strong, just two of them, uh, but they can definitely be a pain. Are they gonna get this advanced metal extractor? Yeah, it looks like they might. There's nothing to stop them, so they very well might. 
we do see that Gaming Grandpa back here has stepped right up to T2 air production. So we have some bombers coming out here, which is definitely very, very powerful. That's a, a mystery tool that'll come in handy later. Still uncomfortable about how far JIT has, per, has pushed up here. I would love to see a front line on this, this part of the map right here, as opposed to behind these mountains. But I guess I can understand why he's holding back there. It just does mean that Cozy's Magician is now in a really exposed spot here. As uh, Greedy could just walk around the back and, and shut down all of this frontward defense. Definitely important to make sure that you line up with your team as far as uh, making your making your production and everything on the on the same scale, same spot. Pulling a few snipers out now. Need to get those uh, early game picks as much as possible. Also building up the T2 economy. I definitely should have just bought a constructor off of the backline player here. But I think the T2 lab in the end actually works out well because it does allow me to get those T2 units out. The hounds come out later as well. Those are always super, super nice. Very, very good to see. Now it's interesting that we see the T1 lab uh, going to be going up against the T2 lab here. Although that being said, CYX D26 does have this air lab back here and still these metal extractors were never captured. That is quite a blunder. That is, that, I mean, th that's four extra metal per second that you could really be having here. And I think that's, yeah, quite a shame that that was never actually picked up by that player back there. We can see if there's ever a reason for an advantage here. Oh, this metal extractor has to start up again. That is unfortunate. But yeah, if there's, if there's any reason for an advantage for the backline player here versus their backline player, it's just the fact that there's now these... Uh, two metal extractors that have been running this basically this entire game here. My commander did go down here, and I'm trying to reclaim as much of it as I can. Get as much metal into my bank as possible before this turret comes up, but uh, yeah, it's not much. Barely barely 85, or bar uh, yeah, barely 15% of this commander actually gets eaten up here. It's quite unfortunate. The Beamer turret does not have the energy to run full, full speed, so it's actually not working properly. See, so it's just kind of letting out little spurts. Not good at all. All these defenses are powerless, actually. It's these snipers. These snipers take so much energy to produce. 20,000 energy on a 500 energy budget is no good. I definitely should have stopped producing the snipers here and switched into something a lot less energy draining. The hounds would probably be a good option, or maybe some sprinters. Thinking maybe platypus might be good too, just because they're so quick. But sprinters would probably be better on a big open map like this. I do use these these uh, ticks that I've been building here to harass down these aggravators, make sure that those stop messing with my front line here. Which ends up working out quite nicely. Grave robbers also pulled to the front lines. Beamer turret weakens them quite a bit, but I do see it with the ticks, so I move in for the kill. Yeah, taking down the resurrection bots is really, really important. It stops this army from becoming unmanageable. At this point, not having any defenses on this front line here becomes really, really painful as these aggregators start to march forward and then suddenly there's actually no defenses here whatsoever. Spec A barely manages to survive that tick attack. I think if the Centurion wasn't there, that, that uh, commander would have been as good as dead. Definitely very lucky there. Now, I'm lucky that Jit did have some tanks on the front line here, wasn't just completely ecoing, had, had a little bit of, uh, little bit of units out on the front line. But it definitely was nowhere near enough units to hold back this whole push, especially now that they're all grouped up here. And so this actually ends up becoming a really big problem. I think it's because Greedzy realizes, well, wait a minute, the, they don't really have the, they don't really have an army to deal with all of this. <laughs> I actually have a, a significant force here, um, and it gives them the confidence that maybe it'd be all right to push forward here. Look at these fiends running out of APM, so those will go down. And the grave robbers, man, they keep moving forward. They're just voracious, aren't they? At this point, I've fallen back, and there's not a whole lot I can do. I'm desperately low on energy. My my economy is dwindling quickly. And, uh, yeah, I've definitely east of myself really, really hardly here. I'm waiting for Gaming Grandpa to send out his first bombing run, because it really is important. But we can see that the red team is pushing us back on basically all fronts. The snipers are finally able to fire now that I've switched to hound production, or rather, rather now that I've paused hound production, so there's no more energy being used up here. The hounds start firing on these aggravators, which is nice, of course. And these snipers start blowing apart these T1 units effortlessly. See, every shot they take is just so, so potent. Do we have pinpointers anywhere? These shots are really accurate, and I'm wondering if somebody built pinpointers already. I don't see any, but I could be wrong. 
Either way, these snipers are definitely good for making sure that these units will step off, stay back, keep off our turf. And they're also great, of course, for dismantling this early game. Uh, light defenses. Probably overkill for these light defenses, if anything. Um, but that's all right. Light laser turrets getting melted away. Centurion's blasting down my uh, my my walls. <laughs> and now this army collapses on coolest magician. This is really painful here. This should have been what Jit was contesting here, instead going for a gauntlet, sort of leaving his teammate high and dry. Yeah, that hurts quite a bit. A lot of this force is stopped, but there are still these Tiger tanks with so much health. I mean, compared to the T1 stuff, the, the T1 tanks, you can see they barely scuff these things. They're so, so quick. They're so tanky. Tanks are tanky, who would have thought? But yeah, these are going to uh, push through and because become quite a problem here. Probably shouldn't have moved these snipers forward, should have just continued moving these forward pushing back this front lane as much as possible here. But you can see these Tigers have now killed two commanders. Jit goes down, which does bring down most of these Tigers, but there's still one remaining, and it is going to be causing quite a lot of pain. This Mauser trying his best to hit this Tiger. It does a good amount of damage every time it shoots, but, you know, still not tremendous. It's about 1% for every time that one of these medium tanks hits this this uh, Tiger tank. So definitely a beast. Don't want that thing to get into the front lines, but the front lines up here has completely been ravaged. We have nothing left up here. You can see there's a single heavy laser turret here to ward off some of these units, but ultimately not enough. The snipers are being pushed by the Centurion, so I cloak them and send them around here, just so that they... Uh, just so that they don't die. Let's see, do they have vision of this? No, they do not see the snipers back there, luckily. These hounds, very, very nice though, very scary. And you can see now that my uh, my energy production is finally up to a decent number now that this first reactor has gone up, meaning that I can actually produce units with the metal that I have. Now at this point I'm trying to think of a weak point here that I can send these snipers around to and actually harass the enemy. I didn't have enough vision to realize that there was probably a really big opening right here. Did those bombers just go through? Oh, they did. So the bombers just went through and they blew up most of Pink's base here. The production isn't destroyed, but most of the economy is. And we can see that the uh, next target here is going to be red. Now there are fighters out and there's manticores out, so these take quite a few hits. Love to see these switch targets here. Looks like they will. Targeting down the fusion reactors, very, very nice. But ultimately, those fighters will shoot down the bombers. That does mean that Pink has completely ravaged those, so that this is the last of Pink's units, and so uh, as, of, as for right now, those units are going to be dwindling very shortly. North here in quite a bit of trouble. A lot of Fiends and Sheldons moving forward, and we don't really have any T2 units to contest these with. So for the time being, this is a really, really dangerous push. We do see a single Fiend back here roasting away at all this economy. Very, very dangerous. Another fiend moving forward here. The light laser turret spots it. But the light laser turret is not enough on its own. Eventually it'll be brought down by the commander and a whole bunch of thugs, but yeah, that, that's quite a lot of damage on the northern side here. A miracle that they managed to hold. Not sure what's going on here. <laughs> very, very odd. We do see a whole bunch of bombers out here, but luckily there was actually an armed... Was that an armed metal extractor? Yeah, it was. An armed exploiter. Uh, they do have missiles that can actually target air. So luckily those bombers actually get shot down mostly by uh, a metal extractor of all things. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? Snipers moving around here. trying. I'm trying to sneak them past the enemy lines, right? They're trying to, trying to make sure that they don't uh, see these bad boys here. But unfortunately, I think this one will be found out shortly. Single aggravator shooting at it now. It does find it. It'll be the end of the snipers, but the Age of the Hound is upon us. The Hound's pushing back this central lane here. 
trying to make a little bit of an opening for the teammate, but there's also a lot of fire going down over here. We see two tremors raining down death from above here. That's such an epic sight. Let's get a clip of that. Very, very nice. Those tremors, they're probably my favorite, favorite weapon of destruction in this entire game. Just so cool. At this point, there are enemy hounds here, so I'm really, really hesitant to push up into that area. These fat boys moving forward. Man, they pack a punch. Look at those bad boys go. Those fat boys, enough on their own to push back that entire army. Convince them to step off. This is very ni nicely done by the enemy team here to build these beholders. It's a very good play. Always really nice to uh, put those down whenever you can just to secure a nice little invisible uh, line of sight advantage here. These bombers come out and it looks like they took down a commander. Interesting. Yep, yeah, looks like it was Cabanza's commander actually got took taken down here. Looks like Bar and Mark's concubine are now on a little bit of a counter push. Very nicely done. Very good hold from this northern side. Not sure where the units went for red. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Uh, I guess our, our production never went back up to normal here. Yeah, so we're actually wasting a ton of units here. Interesting. Yeah, Tire, tire Shadow never, uh, or Tear Shadow never actually rebuilt that. It's quite unfortunate. EMP'd about half of my hounds. Trying to guard them, make sure that they don't get harassed to death. But there's, of course, more units moving in here, dangerous as they are. Those fat boys, every time they fire, their cannons are just so, so cacophonous. And nobody wants to be in the line of fire of one of those things whenever they shoot. <laughs> Even these T2 tanks just get melted away. And these things are pretty prone to friendly fire here, as you can see. Their splash damage is often enough to kill their, their own friendly units, so that's, uh, that is quite a shame. But they're definitely a great option for laying siege to the enemy. Blow my metal extractor. How dare they? Switching into sprinter production here because I know that the hounds are basically being outclassed as we speak. That being said, there's not really a whole lot of army here for orange, but the snipers are headed towards the front line, and those are really, really dangerous. That mixture of Sheldons and Hounds is really potent. Very, very strong unit composition. We even see a Tremor here raining down fire. Not a very accurate weapon, so not great for sieging a specific enemy, but it is good for when enemies are grouped up like this. You can, you can definitely lay down quite a lot of fire into a concentrated area. Trying to help my teammate here as much as possible. We really need to see some more production out of green back here. There's been no economy scaling by JIT, so I think that's where I think that's the reason why most of this has uh, most of this has basically been going on here. We don't see any sort of any sort of uh, reactors, no no uh, energy converters, nothing like that. We're just running purely on metal extractor value, um, which you can see is only 32 metal per second. Not the end of the world, but definitely something to consider. Like these guys could coordinate between who's gonna who's gonna attack and who's gonna produce units here. So I think definitely we should see either Jit or Cozy's Magician here, one or the other, going for some kind of a uh, some some kind of attack route and, and making sure that the economy grows while the other one is holding the front line here, as opposed to a little of both from from both player. And we see these bulls pushing forward and actually catching quite a few of these uh, these Sheldons. Very nicely done by a few, I guess. I mean one. But those bulls are quite nice. It's a shame to see those go down. Definitely a very, very powerful unit. One more. One tiger makes it through here. I think this will probably get mopped up by these T1 vehicles here. These T1 tanks. The stouts. But not without significant costs. Sprinters jump on top of this army to cause quite a lot of havoc. Trying to reclaim as much of this as possible. But that really doesn't end up being very much... Production here is dwindling because of metal. And I think, yeah, I make a very interesting decision here. <laughs> very interesting decision. The front line is losing and we do have these snipers coming out. So I figure, okay, well, I might as well make some ticks to distract these snipers. So I do start up some T1 bot laps and I start reclaiming the T2 lab. Yeah, things get very interesting very quickly here. 
bunch of tigers pushing through here and there's not a great answer to any of this. These really do cause quite a lot of pain. See these have made it all the way to the back line here. Fiend's a great option, of course. Very fast, high DPS. Very, very good move to bring these fiends out. Definitely want to keep them alive as much as possible. The tiger is too preoccupied with uh, shooting down this production facility that it actually sacrifices its own life. A nuke was fired. The anti-nuke system was in place, luckily enough. So we're saying, I'm not sure actually which, uh, it was this anti-nuke that fired. Very nicely done by JTB Hats, getting that anti-nuke up so that the uh, whole team didn't suffer. A nuke, I don't, I'm not sure exactly where that nuke was targeted, but it was definitely pointed towards somebody over here. Tanks get into the back line here, it's quite a pain. Somebody around here had something to deal with this, I can't remember who. Some way or another, this actually didn't end up doing too much damage. The windmills here, saving my energy converters. Oh, well, only for so long. <laughs> well, look at these hailstorms coming out now. Absolutely devastating. Ah, yes, we have some fat boys in the back line to mop most of this up. Very nicely done. The hailstorms are out. Let's see what they can do. The hailstorms are going after Yellow's base. There's no scouting on any of these. What do we see? We don't see much. <laughs> There's no scout on any of these, so we're basically just bombing blind. Um, but there are a ton of these hailstorms, so definitely enough to cause a tremendous amount of pain here. These are also pretty resilient, so we're not we're we're looking at a pretty pretty snazzy uh, bombing setup here. We find Yellow's base. We do decide to drop a few bombs. Some anti-air defenses have come up now, but they will be bombed into oblivion. And most of this base is going to be ravaged, I believe. Yeah, very nicely done. One scouting plane might have been nice, but other than that, hard to, hard to complain. Ooh, is this going to finish? Oh, don't tell me. Oh, yellow just barely avoided that coming up online. I don't think it really matters. There's been so much damage done already here. But definitely, that would have been... So tragic if as soon as the advanced fusion reactor comes online it gets blown up by a bunch of bombers that fly in. <laughs> that would have been absolutely devastating. We did see a fusion reactor here, so I'd love to see these bombers retargeted. We'll, we'll switch back to the uh, the global vision here. You can see now these ticks have actually paid for themselves. These uh, these, these snipers have been tremendously overrun by the uh, by the ticks here. At this point, I think I'm fully committed to it. I'm just like, well. I guess that's my job now. I guess I'm going to be producing ticks for the end of the days. I had also just recently watched that game with uh, Big Fonzie, who made those really, really nice plays with the uh, with the, the early ticks and pawns and, and kept those around in the late game. So I think it was inspired to try out this, uh, this tick-based army composition. Welders are a pretty good counter to ticks. They do have that chain reaction ability where their, their uh, attack arcs to the nearest the nearest enemy. Yeah, and this is really painful. These tanks keep pushing through here, which is just such a pain. I guess it's, yeah, they're just using this lane right here in order to push through, but luckily Yellow has just been bombed into oblivion. So I saw this and I was a little bit worried, but then I realized, oh, actually these are, these are the last, uh, the last units out of Yellow, right? Like these are the, the very last units. <laughs> They are going to take down a fusion reactor, though. That's quite a pain. Luckily, there are snipers out here now in the back line to try and help with uh, re rebuilding here or re reestablishing uh, re control over my own base. My base, my power. And building some of these constructors here to rebuild from the ashes, so to speak. Yeah, overall, the red team is finally being pushed back by the blue that is now uh, teched up a little bit a little bit higher here. We do see Karganeth already brought out here. T3 already on the front lines. That is quite, quite dangerous. Very difficult to deal with that. The tick swarm moves forward. Trying to, be, trying to be a vision source for all my allies here. Make sure that their Sheldons have direct vision so that they can actually fire into this fog of war. Very difficult, but the tick is the unit for the job. Resurrecting this uh, reactor here. 
this oh wow luckily this advanced metal extractor survived with four health <laughs> that's quite impressive a nuke coming down here oh that does wipe away a huge portion of green's army yeah that hurts quite a lot emp bombers out now taking down some uh, anti-air defenses taking down all sorts of stuff I come into my base here, and they actually target my anti-nuke. Now, I think the plan was here. Somebody's firing a nuke at me. Yep. <laughs> they went to fire a nuke at me. Now, very luckily, very, very well done by JTB Hats. Had the anti-nuke back here as well, which kept me safe. That was a really phenomenal play. Really good, really good idea there to try and build that, uh, build CMP bombers, EMP down the anti-nuke system and go for the nuke. That was a really, really swell idea. I was just fortunate to have a teammate who was competent enough to build another anti-nuke. So luckily I was spared. We are going for the nuclear annihilation route here, but we are a Cortex player. Kritz Craig is. So these nukes are going to come out very slowly. Uh, yeah, at this point, the T2 lab had to come back up so that the uh, <laughs> so that the uh, T2 constructor could be rebuilt because it was taken down by those tanks so that the economy could scale again. That was quite annoying. But luckily, I have some more ticks. And those are always fun to throw at the front lines here. Also using all these red spots that were left over in order to piece together another army again. Find this commander that was left alone over here, so I figure I might as well resurrect that and use it to build a little bit of defense here. Why not, after all? Could have used it for the metal it carried in its body, but I figured it was uh, worth the respect to build that back into a uh, an actual unit here. This tank having a little bit of a day. Resurrected. Has that beautiful little halo on it. <laughs> bombers coming back in here. Targeting the snipers now. The snipers are bad boys. Yeah, those EMP bombers. So devastating to deal with so tricky right they just they they can they they can take a hit they're pretty cheap and their effect is just so immediate yeah really really tough to deal with those t1 labs start up again realize that this army is pushing forward now czar's here luckily in order to push this front line this was a lot of sheldon's walking in so luckily it wasn't fiends or sumos or something like that if it was if it was a stronger unit that, that push probably would have been a lot more devastating but luckily for us it was mostly just a lot of Sheldons, which were mopped away by all the units here. Producing a whole lot of units here. The uh, the pawns are what I queue up next. I think the grunts. Centurion. I don't know why Centurion are queued up. Oh, that's not me. That's uh, that was another another unit back here. Yeah, basically going into these early game units. I remember thinking like, okay, well, if somehow uh, somehow the the. Uh, Big Fonzie, the Big Fonzie managed to make this work. Surely I can figure out how to make this composition work here. So I was really determined to figure out how to make this early game composition work in the late game. We see a Zar here. Two Zars. Well, a Zar and a Shiva. I thought it was two Zars, but it's actually... A, looks like a similar projectile, but it's a little bit different here. Now this wall of Sumos looks absolutely devastating here. Gonna need some sort of way to deal with that. Luckily, this is quite a line of fiends and bulls and sumos and... Or not sumos, uh, fiends. Did they say fiends already? I don't know. <laughs> Either way, a whole bunch of units there, and I do push forward with these. I think I was mostly just hoping to scout here, because there was no chance in hell that that unit composition was actually going to be able to do anything. Yeah, these sumos are really good against these fiends. Fiends pretty good, though. I mean, you get them in enough numbers, and they're going to do a lot of damage no matter what. The bull is also tremendously good against the sumos. And yeah, a lot of the sumos end up going down there, which is quite nice. I have all the res bots still here. A lot of them here, and I think there was a few more. Yeah, a lot down here as well. So this, to me, is looking like a juicy metal field right now. Okay, well, if we win this fight, then we can definitely move in here and soak up all that metal, or resurrect and refold all of that back in. I guess I'm just narrating my own thoughts here. A lot of mammoths out here for red, and I definitely think this push could, could be a, a game ender here if we move these mammoths in. Now luckily yellow is still rebuilding. There's a bit of a production delay here as this fusion reactor is coming back online. We don't have any construction turrets to help this. So yellow is just stalling, or rather wasting a whole lot of metal. At the moment, anyway. 
It was really fortunate that, that bombing run took Yellow out of the game almost completely. It was really, really nicely done. Now some dragons are actually moving forward here, realizing that this lane that Yellow was protecting is basically completely wide open, aside from a whole bunch of these, uh, these light laser turrets. But with the energy stall here, they can barely even fire. The dragons move forward and wipe away all these energy turrets, and you know what that means. It means that there's no resistance to some bonds. Now I have two more uh, bot labs here, producing a bunch of pawns, and I actually can't even spend my, mon my money quick enough here, so I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well I better start up some economy. Start up an advanced fusion reactor with a few, uh, a few of these construction turrets to try and build up with that. Always important to scale your economy, especially if you're doing any kind of like, you know, cheesy strategies like this, where you're going for these T1 units, always important to keep scaling your economy because you're, you're never gonna have an efficient army here. Uh, also, resurrecting units like this is really important. Fold these back into the army and make sure that they're constantly getting value out. Very, very nice. At this point, the dragons manage to take down the commander here, the yellow commander legacy. And they're moving on into this base back here. Quite a pain indeed. They do find these metal extractors. They start focusing these down, making sure that yellow has actually absolutely no way to get back into this game. The ticks are cued though. Let's take a look at the way that the ticks are, are uh, focused. This is the, the highlight of the game. This is the part that I was looking forward to. You can see the ticks are routed to run around into the, the main enemy base here. And I realized, oh my goodness, some of these are actually getting through. So indeed, a lot of these ticks end up actually making it into the enemy base and finding ways to uh, to, to get, some, get some work done here, yeah. Some of these ticks moving forward here, a little light laser turret, taking down some of them, but definitely nothing, no, no big deal here. Two ticks in charge of taking down this energy converter, that'll definitely work. Energy converter goes down. Yellow space now completely surrounded by ticks. Production facility is about to be sniped as well. I think, I, yeah, yeah, I switched to the, switched to the production here. Switched to the, the construction turrets, rather. Ticks just running around. I mean, what a what a devastating swarm. <laughs> Somebody told me to wait and they'll nuke. Um, I'm not sure what they were planning on nuking here. Nuking Fred. Oh, they were talking about this, this player up here. I see. Yeah, that was quite nice. Definitely scuffing up a whole lot of those units and causing a, a tremendous amount of pain. At the very least. Those hailstorms were out, and that's why I actually switched to producing a whole bunch of these uh, crossbow here. <laughs> In case you're wondering why those are out on the field for some reason. But yeah, now there's actually a sizable army here that's been resurrected from the grave. And you can see that this is actually quite a formidable, quite a more formidable army composition. We've got Sheldons, we've got Sumos, we've got Bulls. All that good stuff is mixed in right here, so it's actually a tremendous amount of pain. Juggernaut making it pretty far, but Mark's, Mark's Concubine Commander has been resurrected here. It's going to be brought to the front lines. We gotta cloak it. Ooh, we gotta cloak it. Okay, we are cloaked, luckily. Dragons are working on it, but I think definitely moving the Commander in for the D-Gun is the right decision here. Still does a lot of damage just with that passive explosion radius, but uh, manages to still manages to uh, take down the, the Juggernaut outside of a fatal range here. Tons of these nukes are launched, but there's, uh, there's a ton and ton of anti nuke systems here. Definitely plenty to take down some Vortex missiles. At this point, we actually have some vehicles moving forward here. The ticks are becoming overwhelming for this force. Suddenly, they're in the back line, they're on the front line, they're everywhere, you don't want them. <laughs> what do you do about it? Obviously, the answer is a Juno, right? You figure out where this production is, and you Juno it, and then there's no more ticks coming out anymore, which is quite nice. But luckily for me, they uh, they did not have a Juno. These dragons up north pushing through and being another pain in Yellow's side. Somehow Yellow is the target of these, whether they're up north or down south. <laughs> that poor player probably feeling like quite a bit targeted here. Yeah, the dragons, I mean, they're, they're tanky, man. They'll blow up your entire base and more. No doubt in their mind. They take down the constructors, take down the base. Yeah, everything goes up in flames here for these for these uh, yellow player. A few more constructors down here in one lab, barely clinging to life, but the ticks are running through. You can see that the uh, the ticks are finally into the base of orange here, and they get the surround on on a few of these energy converters, getting into the back line, causing a tremendous amount of pain. The 
construction turrets go up in smoke. The ticks are running by. What do you do? They're in the base, sir. They're everywhere. The ticks run in here, and this is the best part right here. Let's get a close-up of this shot. Ladies and gentlemen, ticks destroying an Aphis. When's the last time you've seen that? <laughs> oh no, the commander is here. Commander is here to ward off the ticks, and so they go find a different target here. How about these construction turrets keeping all of this alive? That sounds like a good idea. But suddenly the line is pushed back quite far. There's plenty of defense here, but this entire southern southern, southern this entire southern side is completely left undefended. So not a whole lot to uh, not a whole lot to worry about there. There's a there's a lot of sumos moving forward though. That's quite dangerous. Definitely have to be wary of those. Now, luckily, this Aphis doesn't explode. Luckily. That's going to be my clickbait, clickbait uh, title of the video there. <laughs> so many of these units are moving forward here. The Sheldons keep pressing onward. So difficult to deal with. We do see these vanguards, the, the heavy plasma artillery for the Armada faction here up on this ridge. Difficult to deal with, but they're wasting most of their shots here on the ticks, which is quite nice. Commander moves in to try and degun some of these sumos here. Pays for it with his life, but luckily most of the sumos go down, and that was really the only point there anyway. I think at this point, yeah, this this uh, lightning tank here was worrying me, so I decided to just wait, and uh, we'll route some ticks in at a later time. You can see these ones are moving in in little batches. We're going to start grouping up the ticks and moving them in swarms rather than moving them in big... Uh, big, big collective units, right? Or, or big uh, pathways, rather. Big trails. These nukes continue to go up, but they're still anti-nuke here. I think they're trying to overwhelm the, the anti-nuke counter. Produce more nukes than anti-nuke missiles. Um, but they definitely don't have enough for it. And at this point, when I saw this Aphis right here, I knew that, uh, knew that things were looking pretty dire for the orange player. And like Christmas, that player's base is suddenly gone from the entire map. <laughs> this player, which had been previously pushing the entire front line here, now reduced to ashes. Nothing left in the back line. Crits Craig. Baffled. <laughs> I actually want to read the chat. I couldn't read their chat. Uh, it looks like mostly they weren't, uh, weren't talking too much. I'm curious if they're going to say anything. But another swarm of ticks marches forward, hunting for a vulnerable base. Let's see what we can see here. Looks like Daragon becomes the next target here. A commander is spotted. Oh, I guess not. Ah, uh, that's right. So these bombers started targeting these ticks down, and I had a nasty idea. But okay, well, if you're going to target my ticks down with bombers, uh, what if we just uh, what if we just move these ticks right next to an aphis over here? <laughs> oh, it still hurts to watch in the replay. Oh my goodness. Oh uh, yeah, I had to gloat a little bit. XD, the poor red player. He's looking back at his base, wondering why the hell his teammate just bombed his entire base into smithereens. Tear shadow says sigh. Yeah, what else can you do, right? That's that's almost three bases gone now because of the bombing from your, your backline player. Dear Shadow says, thanks for killing my base. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't fear the tick, I will make you fear the tick. Hope everyone appreciates the tick after this game. Yeah, I wrote that and I knew, that was, that was when I knew that I was going to have to cast this game. <laughs> I knew that this was the game to convince everyone that the tick is a formidable opponent here. You can see the spam coming out now and there's not enough units. There, there couldn't be enough units. All the production is gone. Between the uh, gaming grandpa blowing up all the bases down south and up north so that light blue here had no contest pushing through and then those ticks ravaging the back line over here. Well, there was just not a whole lot more that you could do. Spamming out a whole bunch of manticores, but they don't really help with ticks much. And so these ticks run into the back line of the pink player's base. I'm trying to split off the tick swarm now and move them into different places here. 
easy to forget that the uh, the humblest of units can still be dangerous when they work in a swarm. Go check out my, my Tick's short if you want more information about the Tick. As lethal as it is. What a beautiful, beautiful unit. Watch them destroy the entire production facility back here. And red crumbles to the tiniest of unit. <laughs> yeah. What a what a beautiful little uh, beautiful little little tick unit there. Absolutely love those guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this bizarre game, this T1 late game here. The tick spam late game. I hope this doesn't influence anybody, but also, if you have any epic games and you'd like to send them in, feel free to, of course, at Brightworks Gaming. Brightworks, uh, no, not gaming, Brightworks Replays, that's right, at gmail.com. Got some lovely, lovely replays to look at from a lot of you lovely folk out there. And to you, you right there, you sitting behind that phone or computer or wherever you watch this, I say to you, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope you enjoyed watching. I will see you in the next video.